Mm. I've got to tell you guys, I absolutely love the flavor of this. It's quite remarkable. It's kind of like a mix between a cucumber and a banana with a bit of lemon juice sprinkled on it all in one fruit. How's it guys? I'm Gus the African Plant Hunter. This is the next episode in my ongoing series on underutilized African plants that I believe are crops of the future. And this one is the jelly melon, otherwise known for extremely obvious reasons as the horned cucumber, the kiwano fruit, Cucumis metulliferis, uh, known locally in Zimbabwe as gaka. And it really is an extraordinary plant. It's a climber creeper. I'm sitting here in a maize field. And if you were to walk around this maize field, you'd see plenty of these all over the ground. And of course, growing up the maize stems, often as far as three meters away from the rootstock. Um, it's a very, very adept climber and such a beautiful, delicious tasting fruit. Full of nutrients, very high in vitamin A and vitamin C, the fruit, not just the fruit, also the leaves. The leaves can be eaten in a relish. They can be eaten like a kind of a spinach, just boiled. Uh, they're sometimes dried, lots of different preparations. A lot of medicinal uses associated with the leaves. Actually, uh, one really interesting medicinal use, they are used to treat malaria. And uh, that's not just um, hocus pocus, that's real. Um, they've been found to be almost as effective in treating malaria as chloroquine. So pretty remarkable. And they are, these were one of the fruit that were taken out of Africa by farmers, allegedly from Zimbabwe, to New Zealand in the early 1980s where they started growing it commercially. Of course, New Zealand had made the Chinese gooseberry famous as the kiwi fruit, and they tried to make the horned cucumber famous as the kiwano uh, fruit. Hasn't done quite as well as the kiwi fruit, but it is now sold all over the world. You'll find it in markets and growing indeed in the US, in Europe. It does naturally occur outside of Africa in one place, rather unusually and unexpectedly, which is Croatia. Uh, but not known to be naturally occurring anywhere else outside of Africa, but it is now grown all over the place. Plenty of them in Israel. It grows in dry conditions. Of course, it does perfectly well when they're wet conditions too. Uh, remarkably easy to grow. Uh, it is cultivated. There are wild varieties of this that are a lot less sweet. Um, these ones are very sweet, the cultivated variety. Um, extremely tasty. If you've never tried one, you should. A uh, friend of mine in Botswana, what he does, uh, where the sun um, consumer traditionally in the Kalahari Desert, what he does is to preserve it is he cuts it into very thin slices, dries it until it, it kind of assumes a sort of chewy, rubbery, leathery texture and then eats it just as a dry snack, a bit like a kind of vegetarian biltong. Very, very delicious. Uh, you can also mix it up into all kinds of beverages, very tr commonly used traditionally in beverages, just extracting the pulp and mixing it in. All sorts of nutrients in the skin as well, and actually it has been commercially uh, explored uh, for its uh, medicinal properties in the skin. Some quite interesting uh, flavonol com compounds in there. The oil, which is full from the seeds, and this thing is absolutely jam-packed full of seeds. Are very high in unsaturated fatty acids, really interesting, a lot of potential there as well. So I think this plant, which grows so easily and is, I think, very underutilized and appreciated, has great potential in the future. Uh, we might just need to figure out how to avoid pricking ourselves on these horns, which are, what can I say, very horny. Uh, but, um, but otherwise, it's so tasty, it's well worth the effort getting inside this fruit. You cannot believe it. Mm. So that's it from me, guys. I'm Gus, the African plant hunter, sitting here in a maize field in northeastern Zimbabwe to show you this, another one in my ongoing series on underutilized plants of Africa. 
that I believe have the potential to be great crops of the future. If you've liked it, you can see plenty more on my YouTube channel, Facebook or Instagram. Just go and type in African Plant Hunter. You'll definitely find me there and there's lots more. I'm off to find some new underutilized, underexplored, underappreciated indigenous African plants to make crops of the future. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye.